Welcome to Invigorate Quality Lead Generation, made simple for busy people. No one ever woke up in the morning and went, mm, this is going to be a great day and I'm going to find the hardest way to get stuff done to invigorate my life. So can I assume that you're here to find easier, simpler, quicker ways to grow your business, to free up time, to do the other stuff you need to do and which perhaps you prefer to do. Please tell me in the chat by typing, are you here to grow business? Yes or no? Number one. Number two, I love cold calling. Yes or no? Number three, who's wishing for lead inspiration here to attract and convert more leads? First, I want to get you into the zone of attracting your ideal customer. Just imagine plenty of customers. No hustling, naturally attracting to your business, coming to you with money in hand saying, I'm ready to invest. How would that impact on how you feel in your business, how you show up in your business, how you show up in your life? your family, your friends, your colleagues, your community. Give me some idea of what leads that convert to sales. How would that make a difference in your life? I want to do a quick exercise with you, which I have cribbed from Adam Leipzig in his amazing TED Talk to help you get closer, clearer on your purpose. Isn't that one of life's great questions? What is my purpose? What is my reason for being here? Because it's when you love what you do that the energy just grows. We are going to work through five steps. And number one is, who are you? Just type in the chat, I am, and type your name. Number two is, what do you love to do? Not what are you doing, what do you love to do? What are you really good at? What are you supremely qualified to show people, to teach people, to give to people because you know it so well and you are that passionate about it? Type it in the chat. And who do you do it for? Who needs this from you? Try and describe your ideal customer, gender, age, location, but definitely some of the interests they have and some of the challenges. Now, if you haven't done this and you, you're not clear on this, this is your first step after this chat of mine. Type in the chat, who do you do it for? Who needs what you've got? Number three, what do they need? What do they want? It's incredible. I think it was Steve Jobs who said that, there's no point in asking people what they need because they don't know. They haven't got that knowledge or that bandwidth. And often you're so overcome, overwhelmed by what you're struggling with, you don't know what's going to solve the problem. But what they do know is what they don't want. What are they suffering from? What do they wish did not exist in their life? Type it in the chat. And then the final step is what transformation do you sell? when people buy what you've got. This is about feeling fabulous, about experiencing things that will create memories forever. What is that transformation and feeling you deliver? Remember this quote by Maya De Angela. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. People will never forget how you made them feel. Right, let's quickly string it all together. Get that vibe up, get that energy up, get the commitment up. Who are you? Say it out loud. What do you do? Who for? What do they want or need? What is the transformation you sell? Let's get going. So why should you listen to me? Susie Bauer, owner of Red Matchstick. I have been a marketer my entire life and 10 years ago went into coaching to help business owners and startups do it simpler, quicker, 
to save money instead of getting bogged down by all the advice, all the tech, all the strategies that are out there. Step by step, we build your business until you are big enough to either recruit somebody to do it for you or realize that you quite love marketing, like I do, obviously, and that you want to do it yourself. I am a marketing coach, a marketing enabler, where we overcome gaps and issues and get you moving, and of course, a content creator with Do It For You. My program is called Marketing Made As Simple As ABC, Attract, Build, Convert, and I deal with each part of your marketing strategy to attract leads, convert them to sales. Here today, I am going to share with you, hopefully, some ways to think differently about lead generation, to open your mind to new possibilities. So I ask you to remain very open, connect to your business, and write notes for yourself about things you're going to start doing this week to change the way you are attracting leads into your business and helping them become customers. I have got a download of the transcript of my talk, so you don't have to write everything down. All you have to do is click on the link at the end or email me to send you a copy and all the notes will be there. Just focus on doable stuff because that's where the magic happens. So we're going to talk about the five lead generation mistakes to avoid, and I'm going to give you some tips on how to make sure you do things better or differently. Five pillars on which to build anything. <laughs> it's my go-to basic for any strategy, any plan, any campaign. And then three list building strategies that are no-fail machinery that you implement to keep churning over new leads, warming leads, converting leads, and regenerating leads. And what if you don't do this? We'll talk about that at the end. First of all, five mistakes to avoid. No customer persona. Not listening to your customers. Focusing totally on selling. Impatience to convert a sale. And focus on new customers. Number one. No customer persona or a buyer persona or an ideal customer avatar. The reason this is so important is because any part of your marketing communication that touches the customer, be it physical, be it digital, be it spoken, be it read, be it heard, pretty much everything you put out there is clearer when you know who your ideal customer is. Talking directly to your ideal customer changes everything. But you need to know who they are, what appeals to them, where they hang out, what their problem is, when they are ready to buy. All these things are critical to converting a lead to a customer. Spray and pray, I'm afraid, no longer works because you end up talking to everybody, not hitting the sweet spot. Not listening is mistake number two. We often listen to reply, not listen to understand. Listening to understand means tuning in to what is really being said. Most times people will tell you what you want to hear. And as I've already said, they can't even identify what they really need. Once you know what people really need because you've listened, you can then create your fabulous gift, product, service, define your unique selling point to tune into where they are at with what they need when they need it. Surprisingly few businesses take the time to go to where their customers hang out, like Facebook groups, forums, social media, other pages, networking, socializing. Just listening to people can teach you so much but where ne your next opportunity might be. Effective messaging emerges at the intersection of what your customers want to hear and what you want to say. This is most of our problem. We are focused on selling 
instead of the idea of helping him or her to solve a problem and achieve a goal, instead of the sale. Where do they want to end up? You take them there by showing them, telling them, helping them understand that you are the one that can take them there. People buy from businesses they trust. Once you've attracted them, you have to build that trust. The interesting thing is that only 2 to 5% of your market is ready to buy right now. So what about all these others? Okay, so this 30% we won't even consider because they know they're not interested. But look at all this opportunity here. Probably all your competitors are competing with you for this attention. Here is where there is an incredible opportunity to attract these people to your ecosystem, build the relationship, inform, help, show, until they have made up their minds and they come up there, but they choose you. It means staying in regular communication, taking them on a fabulous journey of discovery that is natural and not salesy. It's helpful and adding value. You make regular deposits into your customer's emotional bank account. We talked at the beginning about how you make them feel. Think about messages you can create around that. When you get customer testimonials, ask them how it felt before they started working with you and how they feel now. That stuff is what other people understand. Throughout your communication, while they are thinking about it, you agitate the problem. You help them understand you understand what it would look like to carry on with the same behavior, the same patterns, the same processes. And what it means to change and why they need to change today. Mistake number four is impatience. Marketing is a lot like fishing. You need patience. You need to sit there and look at the signs and think about what you're putting out there as bait. When's the right time to strike? Building trust takes time. They're not ready when they don't know you. That is for sure. They are not going to respond to buy now, but they might respond to learn more. Think about that simple tweak in your call to action. Give them good information that helps them with their problems and gently, without them even realizing it, moves them down your funnel. I will talk more about ways to do that in a minute, but I want to show you this slide which is my favorite example when I coach customers about persisting, about staying on course. This is a Microsoft study that shows that all sales leads start giving up at like their fourth interaction. And remember, interactions can be social media posts, it can be email marketing, it can be messaging, it can be meeting one-on-one, -on -one, all these things. This strategy, by the way, is my favorite LinkedIn strategy for reaching out when you've identified a potential lead, i.e. it's almost a cold call lead. We develop a series of eight actions on the spreadsheet that start with, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm interested in you because, not straight away what you do and who you are, I'm interested in you because I see you do the following or you post great content, or I see you were referred by somebody else. Something that boosts their ego a bit, because people love that. And from there, you start a conversation. You start showing them what you're about. You start closing the gap. So over eight weeks, takes time. We talked about patience. You build the relationship until you feel it's time to ask for the coffee date. It's much more likely if those people are still interested and they haven't said to you, go away, I'm not interested, that they are going to meet you and then you have that next crucial step to take the lead from warm to hot and perhaps even a sale. Finally, 
New customer acquisition is important, but it's not as profitable as marketing to return customers. How many of you, tell me in the chat, are actually actively communicating and servicing your existing customers, still adding value, still communicating with them, keeping them up to date with your new developments? Because guess what? Right there might be another sale. We need to give the same attention to targeting new leads as we do to nurturing and converting old customers to new business. Co-founder of Airbnb says, build something 100 people love, not something 1 million people kind of like. Because guess what? That's where your message gets lost. That's where it goes into murky waters, where you meet all your competition. Somebody is probably doing it better than you. Those 100 that love what you got are those magic brand advocates that do your word of mouth marketing, that supply you with testimonials, that help your business grow. Now, my five pillars on which to build anything. Today, we're going to use them to build a lead generation strategy. And the five pillars are, why do you do it? Who do you do it for? What are you doing, i.e. the transformation? You get clear on that transformation, not the physical features of what you're doing. When is the right time and where to meet them? We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Remember, my process is marketing made simple as ABC. At this point, I'd like to invite you to join my KISS group on Facebook. Keep it simple, Susie. It's called KISS Members. That's where I deliver lots more tips like this and talks to help you get clearer on aspects of the five pillars, the three steps of simple, simple steps of your strategy. I'd hope to see you there. Let's talk first about who. We've discussed who do you serve. Maybe earlier it was who you would like to serve. But think about that. There's a big message in that inspiration that you got at the beginning. Once you know who you are serving and you talk directly with them, they need to be able to say to you, hey, you're talking to me? And it must be clear why they need to listen to you. They want an answer to the question, why should I care? What's in it for me? This is where you start appealing to their feelings, showing them how it's going to be on the other side of taking the next step with you. And the what is exactly that that they are interested in. We need to stop interrupting what people are interested in, but be what they are interested in. Be that one that connects with them. That's obviously their tribe that has got enough authority to be able to teach them, but be at the right level. Once you have studied that ideal customer avatar and you can appeal to them every time they see you, once again, naturally down your sales funnel. But the what is very interesting when you consider the level of awareness of your ideal prospect. This is a idea that was created by Eugene Schwartz in 1966 already. And I constantly bring clients back to this to remind them that you do, don't communicate stuff that you think people need. You go to their level of awareness where they are in their customer journey and you deal with what they need at that stage. Obviously, the ones who are unaware you literally reach by accident with stories, with talks, with reels, that kind of content that people stumble upon. But once people are solution aware and they start searching for your stuff, you need to worry about search, of course, if you're techie. But your communication is about the benefits, the transformation you deliver so that they can see and feel what it would be like to take the next step. Once they are aware of the solution, they will now start comparing your offer, researching, making comparisons, and that's where you have to show proof. 
you have to show your case studies, you have to have referrals and examples of how you help, who you help, how they feel in conjunction with building your own reputation. Then when they are aware of your offer, obviously the deals are important and how you help them take the next step. No risk, a trial, all those kind of things really help you convert. And finally, when they want to convert, make sure it's simple. Make sure you get out of the way already. And I absolutely am adamant about testing your processes before you launch anything. Does everything work? Do people click through to what they're expecting to find? Do they land on the right pages? Is the conversion simple? There's nothing more important than getting out the way of when people want to buy something. To be successful and grow your business and revenues, you must match the way you market your products, the way your prospects learn, compare, make decisions, and then how they shop. Meet them where they are with what they need at that stage. And that stage comes to our customer journey and pillar number four, when is the right time? You need to be very aware of how ready your customer is to buy before you start saying to them, buy now and expecting them to buy. Are they researching? Are they learning? Are they moving towards buying with you, but still checking how it all works? And then, of course, as we've said, that existing customer is critical. How many of you, tell me in the chat, reach out to people while they are experiencing and using your product or service? Do you check they're doing all right? They're enjoying it? Are there any hitches, any problems? Customer service at this point is absolutely critical to building trust. And that's when people go out there and go, oh my goodness, I've just had the most amazing service, the most amazing experience. And that resuscitates the whole journey because they then use word of mouth to refer you to others. And when you are in contact like this, they can be retargeted and enter this whole cycle again to reuse new products. Customer journey is a key key part of deciding how you communicate, how you market what you do with your ideal customer. Right, so we've got our mistakes, our pillars. Now we're going to talk about three list building strategies you can use to put the machinery in place that keeps on churning leads while you do what you do best. We're going to talk about nets, hooks and buckets, but let me explain how it all works. So here we have my ABC funnel. At the top, we attract our ideal customers. So we go to where they are with what they need and appeal to them to come and join our tribe. And once they join, you start urging them down by building relationships, building trust, engaging with the right content, Obviously, some fall off. That's why it's a funnel. And finally, those get taken even further down and convert. And finally, it goes down to conversion. ka money in the bank. But here's a caveat. Many of you attending this conference are probably geeky and into automation and into tools and tech is no issue for you. I just want to err you on the side of caution. Technology is used to automate, but not replace human interaction. People buy from people. And too often, it is automated that you disassociate with your customers. They need to feel there's a person behind the machinery. The quality of what you deliver and how you deliver and how you make them feel is the game changer. Don't think that you can rely on tech and forget about the person on the other side who's clicking the buttons. Because too often we treat our lead generation and our lead building like a one-night stand. 
There is a way it works. You grab the attention of cold leads. You warm them up with information, entertaining, serving. And once they are hot, you urge them to action with the right offers, when they need it, make it easy to convert. Just quickly, part of the machinery, obviously a critical part of the machinery. The reason you are here today is because of the list building part of your marketing strategy. Why do you need a list? Building an email list is crucial because it is the best way to build a relationship with your ideal customer in an intimate way. Here, you're not just a status update in social media. Here for a minute, and in no time, you're gone. And if they weren't online while you were posting, they've never seen you at all. You get into somebody's inbox. And once they allow you into their inbox, they're putting their hand up and saying, I'm interested. Tell me more. You've got into the inner sanctum that is shared by their work, family, friends, by the important stuff. Treat it with respect. Make sure you add value. The other reasons you need an email list is for legal purposes. With our Poppy Act, GDPR, all the privacy laws, managing a database effectively, managing unsubscribes, updating, cleaning. Email list is also the best way to safe keep that database, to be able to add to it, to use it for segmented marketing, which I'm going to show you in a minute. You have to have a list, folks. Tell me here in this chat, number one, have you got a list? Number two, are you using it to market your business? Another important point here is understanding that this works by going where they are. And there are many places to go now. Because of online marketing and the internet, you've got to understand when you study your ideal customer, where they hang out, what content they like to consume wherever they hang out. When is the best time to talk to them there? So obviously there are many options, but I just quickly want to talk to you about social media because it is so important for attracting your ideal customer. These stats here were 2021 released by WildWorks for South Africa. Now I know many of you are not South Africans here, but many regions do not have social media statistics. So this is a great indicator of what's happening in the social media space about where to go, where should I be. If you are not embracing social media, this is the way the world works and how business works and how marketing works. And that is where you go to help people get to know you, to meet you in the first place. So just look at this. Facebook is still by far the top platform. 27 million users. There are 38 million people online in South Africa. 27 million are on Facebook. The most used platforms is YouTube and WhatsApp messaging. So those two are very important to your marketing strategy. YouTube have now introduced those shorts which is great for the clips where you deal with frequently asked questions, you use it for proof, you help people get to know you, you show a bit of authenticity, the real you, because birds of a feather fly together. People will be attracted to you if they feel some common interest, some sense of belonging. And Instagram is absolutely the game changer. It is so easy to create content for Instagram and then to share that to Facebook. It is huge, 10 million. How many customers do you need, by the way? Twitter has remained pretty stagnant, but LinkedIn has grown significantly. And as I mentioned to you, that strategy of mine with building over time, staying patient, sending people a message a week to get closer and closer and build trust. That is a conversion strategy you should try. TikTok, oh my goodness. TikTok has grown, TikTok has grown from 5 million to 9 million users. And if you're going to straight away say it's not my market like I used to, it's all youngsters. 25 to 44 year old age group is the fastest growing age group. Have you embraced TikTok? 
Do you think it's an opportunity you should be looking into? I'm asking you because I'm dabbling with that question. I'd love to know if you're using TikTok and if you are finding it useful for growing business. So let's get to our strategy now. At the top, where we attract, we cast nets that keep catching even while you're asleep. These are things you put in place. Once you've put them in place, they bring leads onto your list that then go into the rest of the strategy. This is your lead capture, no-brainer, things you must put in place to help you build your list, as I say, when you're asleep. Things like your sign-up form on your website, on your About Us page, on your contact page, Google My Business. Having a Google My Business profile, if you're a brick and mortar, putting content on there, helping people find you, sharing contact details, is a great way to bring people closer to get them into your funnel. Email signatures sound a bit counterintuitive. Why would you have your email signature with a email subscribe? Because people forward emails. The first contact you reply to, they might just click and join your list. Social media, we've said, is your big, big opportunity to cast a net to capture your ideal audience. Make sure you give subscribe options on all your platforms, on your profiles, and you share links for people to sign up in your posts. Can just be, want to hear more? Join our list. And then, of course, you keep updating with new email contacts, with new contacts you make. When somebody gives you a business card, you say, I'm going to add you to my list. Of course, you can subscribe anytime because I'm a professional email marketer. Next, in the middle of your conversion funnel, where we are building, we cast hooks with specific bait that catches people with specific problems in specific places at specific stages of their journey. So it's strategic. It's not just out there like the nets are. It could be a trial. It could be a free gift, a, a download, a contest. Enter the contest. Make sure your contest is relevant to your business. There's nothing worse than using a fancy prize that does not attract your ideal customer. And events like this talk, giving people a download, giving people an opportunity to engage, online training sessions. So how do we do this? We do it with lead magnets, which is a term used to describe a free item used as bait to generate leads. Remember at the beginning, we talked about what you love to do. What creates immediate results? The transformation is easy to use, easy to create. That's where you start. Think about what lead magnets you can deliver, who's already using lead magnets, and type in an idea for me about what kind of lead magnet you have got right now that is getting you great results. It is an exchange of something in return for contact details, and it should be something that is helping your customer along their journey with you. So, for example, I've got one that is time-saving tips, because one of the biggest issues I get when I do marketing, coaching with people, content creation, these things is I don't have time to do all that. So a time-saving tip is a way of freeing up time so people can then commit more time to do their marketing. See how the two relate. So think about cheat sheets and templates, assessments and consultations. Those kind of valuable experiences are fantastic for taking people on the next step. And video training series, part one, part two, part three, where you keep adding value that goes on to take people to buying your actual service. So we've done a track build. Now we get to the bottom where we want to convert these leads. We want to get out of the way so that they buy or give them unique offers. This is where personalization steps in on your list building lead generation, where you personalize, you put fish into buckets. Personalization is not about the first name. It's about relevant content. 
Now we are appealing to specific ideal customers with specific offers. Don't assume, give people the options at that point. But whatever you do, urge them to take the next step. Another big mistake I see people make is they market, they market, they market, but they don't tell people what to do next or don't give them the next call to action step to move down the funnel with them. When you personalize your email marketing to target people with the right message, the right info, the right time and the right offer, they are more likely to take the next step. But here, your automation needs to segment the list into those little buckets. So where, what stage are they at? What is their particular challenge? What do they need from me now? What do they need most? What problem are they trying to solve? Try and work out a way you can segment that list. And then you simply just tweak your communication to suit each one. It might just be an image change. It might just be a subject line. It might be a different call to action. It's not huge. It's not big work. It's just tweaking it to talk to specific people. Instead of spray and pray, you identify that one that you want to convert. Before I close up, I want to share some more steps to invigorate the conversion, because that's what we all want. We want leads to convert to customers. One of the most incredible opportunities we miss is not engaging with them when they are hottest. Remember, conversion is not just about the sale either. It's about taking the next step with you. When they sign up, they're hottest. The minute they found you, they're motivated, they subscribe, immediately give them something that impresses them, that makes them feel they've been noticed, that makes them feel good. An autoresponder, another gift, a freebie, something that helps them build a relationship with you. Take them on the journey with an actual strategy. Make sure you add your own personality, your brand, your unique style. That's how you stand out. Not by copying the gurus with what you see them do. Do your own thing. Be real. Be authentic. People, you are unique in what you do. You have that purpose that is you uniquely. Uncover it. Develop it. Use it to your benefit because that there cannot be replicated. That is your competitive edge. That attracts your tribe. Birds of a feather flock together, help them find you and stay with you. Don't be afraid to urge people to decide to take the next step. That is actually helpful because until they take the next step, they're sitting on the fence. Tell them to do something because that is taking them forward. While people sit on the fence, they're going nowhere. Help people understand what it's costing them not to take action why they should take action today because by next week you could look x x x x instead of being in the same place you are today then make sure you put the machinery in place to keep topping up and topping up with existing customers regenerate retarget reinvigorate them back into that cycle integrate your marketing across all platforms there are so many places your ideal customers hang out, where they can find out about you, where they can engage with you, and where they can refer you to share your stuff. There are different places to attract, to build, and convert. And the more people see you across the whole ecosystem, the quicker they're going to build trust. You are top of mind in all those places. Finally, patience while you commit and persist to doing what is necessary. What if you don't? Well, good luck with the stress, with the hustling, with the cold calling, lack of sleep, disorder in your lives, pressure, frustration. Put a system in place that is going to generate leads, warm them, and convert them 
in a very natural way while you do what you do best. Sadly, opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. I didn't say this would be easy. I said this is marketing made simple. Do the work, put the machinery in place, and magic will start to happen of that, I'm sure. And if you don't want to do the work, if you haven't got the time, we can do it for you. Any small aspect of it, finding out where your stuff is stuck, why things aren't working for you, I invite you to engage with me. Here's my email address, Susie at Red Matchstick. I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn at Susie Bauer, Instagram, Susie underscore Bauer, website, redmatchstick.com, where we show you marketing made simple to attract, build and convert leads. Thank you for listening to me. Let's go and see if I can help any of you with some answers to your questions.